Phantom Hourglass is riddled with gimmicks like using full touchscreen, blowing into your mic, and even needing to close your DS. But it's been 18 years and you want to play Phantom Hourglass or maybe even Spirit Tracks, so here's the best way you can do that. I tried both popular DS emulators, Melon and DSPU Mew, and for whatever reason, when upscaled shadows just pop in Melon, so unless you want to play in the native resolution, I actually recommend you play in DSPU Mew as the game is going to look four times better. So if you never downloaded that before, let's quickly go over it. So you want to head over to this site here called DSMU Mew, and you just click it. From there, you will see it say head over to the download page, click that. Then you actually have to click on their GitHub. And then from there, you just find the one that is a Windows 64, unless you're on Mac or I'm really not sure what these other is. So don't worry about that. You're clicking on Windows 64. Save that to whatever folder you want. I'm going to save it to delete later just because I don't actually want it as I already have one set up. And then from there, just open the zip and drag all the context of the zip into a folder. After you drag and drop it in the folder, you should obviously just see the exe file. So just open that. And this is the emulator itself. So open your legally obtained copy of Phantom Hourglass or Spirit Tracks. We are doing Phantom Hourglass for this video. And then here we'll go over the settings. This is what you guys are watching this video for. So by default, your mouse will actually control the entire touch screen. But you're probably going to want to lay this out, especially if you're playing Phantom Hourglass or Spirit Tracks. By default, the top screen is actually going to be the bigger one because Phantom Hourglass uses the bottom screen for everything and the map for the top. So here are my settings that I have. For LCD layout, I have horizontal and then bottom first. Bottom first is probably going to be the most important thing. A lot of this is preference, so feel free to play around with it, but I'll tell you my exact settings. For window size, just leave that as default. The big one here is actually gonna be screen size LR. So you can play with this if you want the screens to be the exact same size, if you want it one to be a little bigger than the other. Personally, me, I thought 1.4 over 6 was the best. I'll just click one here and show you like the difference so you can see that makes the map a little bigger. But like I'm streaming the game, so I want more focus on the main game. From there, the biggest thing that you want to do is actually go over here. 3d settings now this is going to be super important so there's different ways that you can render in the game uh for whatever reason if you use opengl 3.2 once again you will have no shadows in this game i actually played my first few hours of this and i was like why don't i see any dig spots and then i realized oh okay i had to go on this one here uh the soft raz and that will give you shadows everything that you want so make sure to click that and then GPU scaling uh, factor. So this will make the game look a little bit better, but the higher that you put this up, the slower that the game and sounds will start to crack. I found six is the perfect medium between good sound, good visuals, and it does not slow the game down at all. Now, texture scaling, you want to go to, you're going to want to put this all the way to four times. Everything else you can mess around with if you really want. Personally, I just left it as default. Now, what do you do for the gimmicks of the game, like blowing into the mic? If you go over to config, you can actually see a microphone settings, and there's three different settings. So I've tried to mess around with connecting my own microphone, but could not get it to work. But they have internal noise samples. So you actually are just going to click that. The only time you're not going to click that is for blowing into the mic. For whatever reason, there's not any mic samples for blowing into the mic. So you're actually, when the are on the parts, there's an entire like dungeon where you're just going to leave use mic samples, select it. So you'll actually select that one. And now I will upload a file. Luckily for you guys, I included a Mediafire link that I will have in the description below where you can download a perfect blow into the mic sample. So just go ahead, download this, take it out of its zip folder. And then when you're back into here, you're just going to click these three little dots. And then I actually ended up just putting mine into my 
ROMs folder, and then I have mic sample. This doesn't really matter. You can save it wherever you want, but I just have it here within my ROMs folder in case I ever need it in the future. So go ahead and save that into the thing, and you are good to go on there. Now, how do you actually use any of these? So when going into hotkey hot config, you'll actually just see hotkeys for most of these. So whenever I want to activate anything to do with my microphone, I just have it set to backslash. You can change peer, uh, some samples. So if you do one sample and it doesn't work, just press like period sometimes, and then you can go through different samples uh, that will more than likely work when you do the yelling into the microphone areas. Now for our last big gimmick that the game has, you're going to want to go into control config and you'll see a button that says, or you'll see an option that says L I D. So you just, whatever hotkey you set this to, you are going to press this in areas where the game wants you to close your DS. So like that puzzle where you need to stamp the map to the C chart. You just click this and that simulates closing the DS. All right, guys, let me know if there's anything that I missed in this video or if I helped you out at all. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, stay frosty, folks.